Chapter 33 is called A Rat Who Knows Her Name. Mink had climbed the dungeon stairs and was preparing to open the door to the kitchen when the rat spoke to her. May I detain you for a moment? Mig looked to her right and then her left. Down here, said Roscuro. Mig looked at the floor. Gore, she said. But you're a rat, ain't you? And didn't the old man just warn me of such? Beware of the rats, he said. She held the tray up higher so that the light from the candle shone directly on Roscuro and the golden spoon on his head and the blood-red cloak around his neck. There's no need to panic, none at all said Roscuro. As he talked, he reached behind his back and, using the handle, he raised the soup spoon off his head, much in the manner of a man lifting his hat to a lady. Gore, said Mig, a rat with manners. Yep, said Roscuro. How do you do? My papa had him some cloth much like yours, Mr. Rat. It's red like that, Mig said. He traded me for it. Ah said Roscuro, and he smiled a large, knowing smile. <laughs> Did he really? Well, that's a terrible story, a tragic story. Readers, if you'll pardon me, we must pause for a moment to consider a great and unusual thing, a portentous thing. That great, unusual, portentous thing is this. Roscuro's voice was pitched perfectly to make its way through the torturous path of Mig's broken-down cauliflower ears. That is to say, dear readers, Mig so heard perfect and true every single word the rat Roscuro uttered. You have known your share of tragedy, said Roscuro to Mig. Perhaps it's time for you to make the acquaintance of triumph and glory. Triumph, said Mig. Glory? Allow me to introduce myself, said Roscuro. I am Charoscuro. Friends call me Roscuro, and your name is Miggery So. And it is true, is it not, that most people call you simply Mig? Oh, ain't that the thing, shouted Mig. A rat who knows my name. Miss Miggery, my dear, I do not want to appear too forward so early in our acquaintance, but may I inquire, am I right in ascertaining that you have aspirations? What do you mean aspirations? shouted Mig. Miss Miggery, there is no need to shout. None at all, as you can hear me, so I can hear you. We are two perfectly suited, each to the other. Roscuro smiled again, displaying a mouthful of sharp yellow teeth. Aspirations, my dear, are those things that would make a serving girl wish to be a princess. Gore, agreed Mig. A princess is exactly what I want to be. There is, my dear, a way to make that happen. I believe that there is a way to make that dream come true. You, you mean I could be the Princess P? Yes, your highness, said Roscuro. And he swept the spoon off his head and bowed deeply at the waist. Yep, your most royal princess, P. Gore, said Mig. May I tell you my plan? May I illustrate for you how we can make your dream of becoming a princess a reality? Yes, said Mig, yes. It begins, said Roscuro, with yours truly and the chewing of a rope. Mig held the tray with one small candle burning bright, and she listened as the rat went on, speaking directly to the wish in her heart. So passionately did Roscuro speak, and so intently did the serving girl listen, that neither noticed as the napkin on the tray moved. Nor did they hear the small mouse-like noises of disbelief and outrage that issued from the napkin as Roscuro went on unfolding step by step, his diabolical plan to bring the princess to darkness. And that's the end of the chapter and the end of the third book. And I remember this third book was all about who? Yeah, Miggery So. Hmm. Okay, readers, we found out something was going on with that napkin. As Roscuro was explaining his plan to bring the princess to darkness, said the, mat, the napkin did what? Yeah, it moved and it made some noises. What or who do you think might be under that napkin? I 
think you might be right. It might be Despero. I know because it said mouse-like noises of disbelief and outrage that came from it as Rescuro was explaining his plan. Now I have to remember, what does Rescuro want? He wants revenge on the princess. What does Miguri so want? Yeah, she wants to be a princess. And what does Despero want? He wants to save, serve, and honor the princess. Hmm. So as we enter this fourth and probably final book, I think we're going to see all of those wants and needs come together and see who wins. All right, let's keep going.